Hello. Welcome to EasyVB. Tutorial 12. In tutorials, 1, up to 11, we introduced Visual Basic and explored some concepts with the creation of a few simple applications, including an on-screen, keyboard, in tutorial 11. Until now we have not written a great deal of code and only touched briefly on variables, one of the most important aspects of coding without which useful applications cannot be created. In this tutorial we will discuss variables, what they are, their types, how to declare them, and run a few examples using them. We will not cover everything about variables, but we will cover enough to move on in this tutorial series, and to use with future projects. So what is a variable? A variable is simply a value, that can change, depending on conditions, or on information passed to it when an application is running. A variable has two main parts, a name, and a data type. The variable name can be anything we choose. For example we could have a variable called my integer and its data type could be integer. We could also have a variable called my dog or my cat and still having data type integer. An integer is just a whole number, that is, a number without any decimals. It can be positive, negative, or zero. Before we can use a variable in our code we must first declare it. We do this by writing a dim statement. For the example of the variable with name, my integer, we would write dim my integer as integer. Dim is an acronym for declare in memory. By writing a dim statement in our code, memory space is allocated for the potential values of that variable. The amount of memory allocated depends upon the variable data type. Declared variables will have an initial default value associated with the data type. For example, for integer data type the default value is 0. To demonstrate examples of variables, data types, and their uses, we have pre-prepared an application, in which we have populated form 1 with a number of buttons. As this tutorial is a demonstration, not a project, there is no need for you to create this application and we will not cover the creation process step by step as in previous tutorials. If however, you want to get more practice at setting up forms and objects, you can duplicate the form, buttons, and code. As a reminder for setting up buttons and their appearance properties, re-watching tutorials 7 and 11 will help you. Ok. First let's look at an example of an integer variable. We have written the variable declaration statement dim, my integer, as integer, and on the same line we have initiated my integer with a value by tagging on, equals 25. This changes the default value of my integer from 0 to 25 at the start of runtime. We have some code pre-written, a button click sub, for the cyan colored buttons. Let's open up that code and have a look. Run the application to see what it does. Click button my integer, and note that the value 25 which we assigned to the variable my integer, gets written to the text box. Click the buttons, integer plus and integer minus. Note that the text box number increases or decreases by one per click. Close the application and look at the code. We can see from this that when the plus or minus buttons are clicked we are changing the value held by the variable my integer, by plus or minus 1, then passing the new value to be written into the text box, tb1. Change 1 to 5 in the code and rerun the application. Now we can see the value of variable my integer, increases or decreases by 5. Close the application and now change 5 to 0 0.1. Run the application. Note that now when we click on the integer plus or minus buttons the value written for variable my integer does not change. Because the data type is integer, it will always take the value of a whole number. No decimals allowed. 
If we change the initialization value to 25.1, the code accepts this initialization value without throwing an error, but it converts 25.1 to the nearest whole number of integer data type, in this case 25. If we change the initialization value to 25.5, which is midway between 25 and 26, it converts to the nearest even whole number, rounding up to 26. Similarly for initialization value of 24.5, the conversion to integer rounds down to 24, the nearest even whole number. OK. Now let's look at an example of a real number variable, that is, a number which can have decimal places. We have written the variable declaration statement, dim, my double, as double. Note that double is just the name of a data type of real numbers that supports decimal places. On the same line we have initiated my double with a value by tagging on, equals 25.1. This changes the default value of my double from 0 to 25.1 at the start of runtime. Again we have some code pre-written, a button click sub, to the green colored buttons. Let's open up that code and have a look. Run the application to see what it does. Click button my double, and note that the value 25.1 which we assigned to the variable my double, gets written to the text box. Click the buttons, double plus and double minus. Note that the text box number increases or decreases by 0.1 per click. Close the application and look at the code. We can see from this that when the plus or minus buttons are clicked we are changing the value held by the variable my double, by plus or minus 0.1, then passing the new value to be written into the text box, tb1. Now change the declaration value of my double to 25.63, the plus value to 1.7643 and the minus value to 2.31245732. Run the application to try that out. We can see that the double data type is supporting numbers having 2, 4, and 8 decimal places, or whatever number of decimal places are required, although there is a limit. OK. Now let's look at an example of a string variable. We met strings already briefly, in tutorial 4, and a bit more in tutorial 11. A string is just a line of text characters. We have written the variable declaration statement, dim, my string, as string. On the same line we have initiated my string with a value by tagging on, equals easy vb. This changes the default value of my string from the null value, nothing, to easy vb at the start of runtime. Again we have some code pre-written, a button click sub, for the orange colored buttons. Let's open up that code and have a look. Run the application to see what it does. Click button my string, and note that the initialization value ezvb which we assigned to the variable my string gets written to the text box, click the buttons, the value of my string gets changed and the new text string written to the text box. OK. Now let's look at an example of a boolean variable. A boolean variable is a logical variable and the data type can have only two values, true, or false. Boolean variable are used a lot in coding and are extremely useful. We have written the variable declaration statement, dim, my boolean, as boolean. On the same line we have initiated my boolean with a value by tagging on, equals, true. This changes the default value of my boolean from, false, to, true, at the start of runtime. Once again we have our pre-written code, a button click sub for the red colored button. Let's open up that code and have a look.
Run the application to see what it does. Click the red button repeatedly and we can see that a string is written to TB1 that describes what the value of my boolean was. With each click the value toggles from true to false. If the value was true then TB1 receives that message, however, at the same time as making that click, the code changed the value of my boolean to false, so in the successive click the message received by TB1 is that the value was false, and so it continues true, false, true, false, and on. Note that the code here uses an, if, then, else, statement, which we met already way back in tutorial 1. Although we have not yet explained if, then, else, in a tutorial, we will cover it soon, but with the few examples we have used, you probably understand it well already. Ok. Now let's look at an example of a button variable. In this example we have chosen a button, but we could equally have chosen any other control, a picture box, a text box, a label, and so on. We have written the variable declaration statement, dim, my button, as button. So in this case button is the data type. For this type of variable its default value is the null value nothing. In this case we must initialize the variable with a value before using it, however, tagging on equals and a value on the declaration line does not change the null value for this type of variable. We can, though, initialize the variable through a load event, and we have pre-written the code to do that. Here we are initializing the variable my button with button name, btn my btn3. In this tutorial we will not cover the load event which will be the subject of a later tutorial, here we are only bringing to attention that we have initiated my button with a value. In this case we have pre-written code, a button click sub, for the grey, colored button. We also have three yellow colored buttons which are not part of the button click event. In this case we are going to use the value of my integer, to assign one of the three yellow buttons as the value of variable my button. Run the application. Click button my integer, click button integer minus repeatedly to bring the value of my integer down to zero. Now click the gray button. Note that although the value of my integer is zero, my button three was colored blue. This is because we already initiated the variable my button with the name of my button three. Now change the value of my integer between 1 and 3. Each time the grey button is clicked the numbered yellow buttons, my button, corresponding to the integer number, get changed to, blue. We can see how this is being done when we look again at the code, but the important learning from this demonstration is to understand that we can have a variable which is a button, or other control. This can be very useful in coding applications. In this tutorial we have learned about variables for whole numbers, integer, for real numbers, double, for lines of text, string, for logical operations, boolean, and for controls objects such as buttons. We have learned how to write variable declaration statements, assign data types, and initialize values. In the next tutorial we will learn more about variable data types. Thanks for watching. We hope this tutorial was useful. If it helped you, please like, share, and subscribe.